we're continuing to hear about the ways in which um, this thing called Ritter impacts our Ritter team and also then impacts you as a congregation. And so this morning, we're going to invite Angela to share a little about our, her journey as part of the Ritter team. Good morning. Um, my name is Angela Cruz Visser, and I'm going to share a little bit about how the Ritter church renewal process um, has impacted me. You've been hearing over the past few weeks from different Ritter team members who each shared a piece of um, what the Ritter process has looked like for them, what impact it's had. Um, for me, one of the frustrating things uh, when someone asks about what, what is Ritter or so how's that Ritter thing going is that I don't really have a straightforward answer. Um, it's a process. And I, I've noticed that it's not a linear process. Um, so far, we've been meeting regularly together with a team. We've been attending retreats together. We don't have the process mapped out for us. They didn't give us an agenda um, saying this is what we're going to do at the first section, and then we're going to do this, and then we're going to get here. Um, so we don't have the process mapped out for us, and I, I think that's on purpose. Um, our ARC, Ritter Church Renewal Team, um, we began by meeting together and working through a process called purposeful living. So developing our own personal timelines and reflecting on our own values, developing our personal calling statements. Members of the Sunday School class, the Church Renewal Starts With You class, are working through that process right now. Then the Ritter team attended the first Ritter retreat, and we were introduced to the mental model of discipleship. Um, and we had a sermon series about this earlier, um, reflective life, authentic community, and radical obedience. Within that framework, we've also been talking about systems. We've been talking about managing anxiety, about emotional maturity. Those all may be things you've heard someone talk about. At our first retreat, the facilitators challenged those of us there to consider that this Ritter church renewal process uses a type of learning that they call the Hebrew way. And they place this up against the Greek way of learning, the more typical way of learning. We're given some content or material to learn through reading or through lectures or listening. And then we're asked to demonstrate our learning by writing about it or taking a test. The Hebrew way of learning, by contrast, is more of a process of practicing, of reflecting, and then practicing again. Now, honestly, I am so much more comfortable with the Greek way of learning. It served me well through school. I like knowing I've mastered something. I can take a test. I can write competently about it. I can tell you about it and what I've learned. I've done pretty well in a Greek system of learning. The Hebrew way of learning, on the other hand, is extremely frustrating. Um, part of the frustration for me is that there's no way to get it right, because I like to get it right. And part of the frustration is that it requires change. You can't practice it without doing something. There's no way to practice unless you do something. You can't just read it and say, all right, I get it, and then move on. For me, this was really clear to me um, during our first retreat as they were talking about anxiety. Um, I tend to worry a lot. I, I carry a lot of anxiety. And so as we're discussing systems and anxiety and systems and some tools to become less anxious in situations, I realized that if I was really going to embrace this Hebrew way of learning, I couldn't just say, yes, I know I'm anxious. Um, I know some coping strategies. Check. Got that. It doesn't work that way. Um, I was going to have to try to do some things differently, and also then to risk failing at doing things differently. So when we were challenged to commit to a personal spiritual discipline, I chose to try meditation, um, knowing that it's been shown to be useful in reducing anxiety. So far, I've been practicing. Um, that is, I've been trying, failing, um, thinking about why it is that I failed, and then trying again and trying to get more comfortable with the Hebrew way of learning that requires risk, requires change. It requires something more than just cognitively understanding this Ritter stuff. Um, and I'll keep practicing and keep trying. And I think that's part of the call um, 
that the entire Ritter team has, is to keep practicing, keep trying, not being afraid to fail, um, and learning from each other. And hopefully, um, as we go along, we can share more and more of those practicing and trying things with you all. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. And I know um, last week someone mentioned to me, like, I don't really remember much about Ritter. Why are these people sharing? And I get that because, you know, we've been talking about this for months and months and months. And sometimes you're here on a Sunday, we talk about it, and sometimes you're not because we all have other things that um, travels and families and lives that pull us in different directions. And that's okay. So if you're curious, I'd invite you to contact uh, Mike and I, and we can tell you more about it in a brief way. We won't, um, you know, talk your ear off, but just give you a few sentences and overview. Or you can ask Angela or Jeff or Steve, um, and then we have other people, Bo and Sharon, yes, um, and missing one person, Tamara. So ask those people um, to just tell a little bit more about their own experience, and that'll kind of catch you up too as well.